a Tampa Bay Ray. You know, dude. Speaking of the Tampa Bay Rays, do you know a little bit about the situation that's going on with uh, them splitting time in Montreal? Have you heard anything about this? Yeah, I heard. I heard about it because the truth is, I mean, I live in Orlando, and there have been some pitches in the past where where a group from Orlando was offering to take 20 games from the Tampa Bay Rays. You know, so it, it's actually something that... It's something that, when I heard it, I'm like, I'm like, darn, it was supposed to be Orlando. Because, you know, I mean, the truth is... It doesn't make Tampa, any sense to me. No, the, the part that makes sense is that they're not getting the number of fans that they, they should be getting. And, then move the team. Well, but the, but the problem is, is that... If, if if you if you move from Tampa Bay to Montreal, that's a terrible idea because you're going from like literally the what is it the the ninth biggest uh, TV market, which means X number of dollars to to a really minuscule TV market in, in Canada. I mean, if you're going to move that team, there are places move you, it can to Portland. Tell, you can Portland. Portland wouldn't be the answer. The, the places would be like would be large cities that don't have a team: San Antonio, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Columbus. Like, and Columbus has too many teams in Ohio anyway. Those those cities yes. have have nine hundred people, nine hundred thousand people or more in there. But you can't leave for that reason because they're going to they're going to make more money in Tampa than they are going to make playing. Then in. why don't they move them out of St. Pete? I mean, that's my big. I hear that's the biggest beef with Tampa Bay is the fact that it's in St. Pete uh, and people and, don't want to go over the bridge to get there. Well, it's because of it's because of bad management at the start. It's like once if if you live in, they have to get the local people, the local the local magistrates to back the idea. Okay, and once they've sunk a lot of money, if you know the history behind Tampa, is that they built that stadium something like ten years before they were awarded a team. They built that stadium yes. in in like the late eighties because they were trying to draw the White Sox to come down, and they were very close to that. But because they didn't have anything set in stone, they didn't give up the prime real estate. It's it's. I mean, where they're at is a beautiful part. Of the, the it's on the southern end of St. Pete. It's a beautiful part of this. You, know, you drive through the downtown. If you have all the time in the world, it's a nice area there, but it's just too far from everyone else. You know, there's this I four corridor sure. has, you know, it's like the, the 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 biggest city in 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 Florida is is Jacksonville. The second biggest is Miami. The third, fourth, and fifth biggest cities are Tampa's third, Orlando's fourth, St. Petersburg's fifth. And actually, when they got the team, St. Petersburg was fourth and Orlando was fifth. We've swapped in the last ten years. And so the idea is that if you could capitalize on all three of those, you got to, like, you know, we have about 400,000 people here. Tampa's got about 550,000. There's about 380,000 in, in, in St. Petersburg, 360,000, something like that. You put those three together, you're talking about a, a city the size of San Francisco, the city the size of. Sure. Then, you know, then put them somewhere centrally located. They've got to do, MLB's got to do something to save that franchise. But it's they such put, a greatly run franchise. They're they, so successful. They, they, they built, deserve a fan base. They built, they built that stadium before they had a team. So they, they, it was on, it wasn't on prime real estate. It was on real estate at the edge of that corridor. When, you know, I, I always tell, like, uh, you know, I, I've lived off and on in Orlando. When I was in college, um, the, the Tampa Bay got a, got a hockey team, right? And for their first year, they played at Expo Hall before the, the first two years before they moved. They moved to the trap. The trap, and Expo Hall was on Hillsborough three hundred one. Okay, and the drive from Disney World to Hillsborough three hundred one is like a forty five minute drive. All highway, pretty nice, right? That's something you could do on a Tuesday night. Admittedly, I'm thirty minutes from Disney World, thirty five minutes from Disney World. But I bought season tickets to the, to the Lightning when they were on on the outside rim of the city, you know? When they moved to Tropicana, um, I got a refund because I went to, like, the, I went to like the second um, preseason game. And literally, it was, like, it was like what what was, like, an, like, basically an hour drive. You know, sometimes it was an hour eight, sometimes it was 56 minutes, which is not the end of the world, became almost a two-hour drive. And you put that on both ends of a game, it makes... Yeah, that's it, four hours. That's nuts. It, 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 makes, it makes anything but a weekend thing impossible. And it's, it's like that's how far across they are because you have to cross the entirety of Tampa, which is a pretty decent sized city. You have to cross one of the the, the bridge across the bay has got to be like the fourth longest bridge in America. So it's a it's a two hour drive to get to a race game. So you're telling me it's one forty five if, if if things are good. But that the, is the, insane. But the biggest problem is that is that the highway crosses the highway crosses the the bridge, right? But the stadium is not off the highway, so when you when you cross the bridge, you go about two stoplights in, and you take a left, 
And so you have you literally have to drive through downtown to get there, which is a, which is a pretty drive or whatever. Traffic, but there's traffic and lights the whole way, and so uh. <clears throat> so like if, if there are people going to the game, it's really that last part adds even more time to the drive. And, and is there any kind of like mass transit to get to the stadium or anything like that? In Florida, nah, we've talked about it for years. See, that's that's nuts, man. That's mm-hmm. absolutely crazy. I don't understand how any major city doesn't have mass transit, so especially to get to a game. So Tampa Tampa's been talking about re. You know, like doing something to bring them across the thing, and they get close and they fall. They fall apart. the The Tampa Bay Lightning moves across the bay back to Tampa, and I mean, admittedly, it's not a four hundred forty thousand seat auditorium. It's only like twenty three thousand. They sell out virtually every night, and people from Orlando go there, and people from Sarasota go there, and people from St. Pete come across the thing because that's how you by being more centralized, you can capitalize on all those different places. Sure, but, sure, you know, and it would make a lot of sense. You know, you know, I, I, I've been to Tampa Bay, the Rays games, and I actually think the stadium is fine. I just, it's really, it's, it's all location. If that you don't was, think that it, there would be a need for a retractable roof stadium, because I mean, I think that'd be more fitting for that area. Like, Could you take advantage of some of the nicer weather? I, I, put, I put, I put it this way: it's like, it's like the Miami Marlins have a retractable roof stadium, right? And, sure. And uh, last year they opened the they opened the roof nine days. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, the the, 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 the year before it was seven, nine, nine of eighty-one. So that's what fucking ten percent of the home games. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, from from a from a Floridian standpoint, the, what, the reason this is a big deal, the reason why it's written in our paper is because the difference between a a solid state dome stadium and a technical dome stadium, stadium is literally almost half of. This is like what is it like? It's like it's something like forty million dollars more to do the technical roof, right? It's like yeah, it's a lot. why why do that for seven games? You yeah, know, it's like with it. it's like just be a dome stadium. I, I understand that you want the convertible, but have you ever bought a convertible car? Like it's a joy. <laughs> it's a joy for the first two weeks. But the rest but the rest of the ownership time you're sitting there going, What did I do this for? Look at my hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like it's so freaking sunny out. It's like you know, it's like I, I, I'm going to this meeting with a burn on my forehead and and sunglasses lines because I because I bought I bought the car of a 22 year old with no responsibilities. No, I, I, so I, yeah, I, I'm all, I'm. All, it's like if, if 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 you could open the dome for more than seven days a year, which is what they're averaging. Okay, but man, at seven, that's a lot of money for almost nothing. You know, the only thing it does do, and that's what people says, is it allows them to not have turf. You know, it's like you yeah. can open, you, yeah. open the, you open the dome to, to grow. So yeah, that, so see, that would be ideal not to have turf. I hate playing on turf, man. It's the worst. We've got our, we, where I live in Oregon, we get a ton of sun here, and the grass bleaches out by like July, August, where it's completely white. And so the local softball park, is completely turfed out. <laughs> I've literally stopped playing in that my town and started playing in the next town over just so I can play on a real grass field again because I hate the turf so much, man. It ate me up. It just eats my joints up running on it. It's like dudes are out there playing in like regular shoes, no cleats, can't wear cleats on it. it it's crazy, man. I was hoping turf yeah. got, got better, but that was my experience with it when I was in high school. And we used to God, uh, we, was, we, we didn't plan it, but every now and then they would have a you know they would have like a special game at Hanson Stadium or something, and those places were turf and. The, <clears throat> I just remember, like, really just really crappy burns on my arms and stuff. I was yes. Like, oh, it was terrible. It's like, yeah. It was, I was the only thing, thing I liked about it is that <clears throat> on the infield, man, if a ground ball hit in a certain spot, you knew you could get a read on it every time. So it made playing defense really easy. Um, but if you hit it there, on you know, if you're in, in offense and you hit it somewhere, you know you have no chance. It's just It was just the, the bounce of the, of the turf. Yeah, so we got. On, yeah, do we, we we we've been going for like twenty four minutes, and we, I don't Tampa. think we discussed anything. anything what, what, we talked about. On, well, on well, I, I want I want to say this. I want to say this. My feeling about them playing twenty games someplace else is, is yeah, they, they teams probably ought to ought to embrace this. Um, the team that should be playing a few games in in Montreal is probably Toronto, and not in that. Yes. You know, it's it's like baseball is very parochial. Every team every team that you root for is because you feel you, you feel an attachment to them for some reason. No, you know, you know, you, no, you Douglas, don't. can I stop you? If there's any team that should be playing games in Montreal, it's the fucking Washington Nationals. <laughs> Cuz well, that's the that's the former Expos. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you if you remember, if you, if you if people don't remember why Montreal left there, it's like Montreal could not draw a million people. 
Every other team That's was because struggling. everyone left after the strike because they were pissed off because well, it's, it's still kind of, X was, had that amazing team in 90, what, 96, right? They should have won it all. But they knew the Nobody writing was on the wall, the and, they, and they didn't Pedro. do it. Like, no, and that's the yeah. thing. Like, it's like you, you have a strike. The baseball players have a strike, and it ticks off the Montreal guys. And the Montreal guys don't go to the games. Then they don't get a team. You have to go to the games to get a team. You don't have to sell out every game. But when you're dead last in attendance, when, like, literally in their last year that, that they were in the game, they played 22 games in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in a stadium that only sat 17,000 people, and they outdrew... Perfect. They outdrew Montreal in those games, even though they, even though uh, the Ex- Ex- Expo Stadium sat like thirty six thousand, they were getting fifteen thousand each. They actually crossed a million for that year based on that those extra games. It's like, no, you, you have to support at some level. Now I, I know I'm sort of talking sideways compared to my race thing because if, if if you're not going to go to sport, you have to have the you have to, you have to have the sport by eyeballs on the TV set or on the radio. Which Tampa Bay does have, and the Miami Marlins do have. People, people who don't live in Florida, don't know that people do watch those games pretty religiously. They just don't. There's so many to... old people, and they don't want to leave the house when they're well, old. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like you're not. It doesn't matter that they're old, because it just matters that they're eyeballs. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they they they, they, they would pre- they would prefer. Yeah, I mean, they would prefer people under the age of uh, what is it like the the key market is 34 to 55. They prefer that. Those guys are spenders, and if not that, they prefer younger people because that's the future. But yeah, they're watching the game, and you can't say that about the guys in Montreal. You can't say that about moving to Portland. There won't be as many eyes on the game, and those eyes yeah, are what. Are, are what there'll, be a, there'll be a lot of eyes in the game. It, 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 what sells tickets? What sells? They'll, they'll probably become part of the Root Northwest package, which you broadcast all over the Northwest. So that would be kind of like how the how the Bay Area has the two teams on, where they share the A's and the Giants. They'll do the same thing. They'll share a market with the Mariners. <laughs> I, I just think that there is a place. If you took all the low end teams, the teams that don't draw well, like the Marlins, the Indians, the the Rays, you know, and said, yeah, you know, you, and, you know, do you really think the Indians are a part of that? Indians don't draw. Really? You know, you know, I mean, they, yeah, I don't. I don't know too much about Cleveland. You know, I mean, I don't have it in front of me, but like last year, they were they were they were they were making the playoffs, and they only were averaging like seventeen thousand stands. And I'm not saying get rid of their team, but like people always say, like, what should you do to penalize a team for tanking? Well, if you tank, your attendance goes down. So let's say any team that is is under like is in the bottom six in attendance, they have to do more outreach games and and do that sort of thing. It's like it's like have, have the Indians play twenty games in Columbus, man. Own that city, you know. You know, you know, have Tampa play twenty games in Orlando, own that city. Have Miami play twenty games in San Juan, own that city. Get those markets under under wrap, and you'll make the you'll make the team more valuable. I, I mean, I wouldn't do it necessarily to. I wouldn't want to do it to the Yankees or the Cubs. You're right. You know, it's like there are. You know, right. it's like, you know, it's like it's like our fandom is parochial, and so it's like. You know this. You know it's like I'm a fan of the Cubs. So I grew up a Cub fan, and as much as I lived in Atlanta for ten years, and I sort of, I sort of like them a little bit because I have friends that are Atlanta fans. So I sort of rejoice a little bit in their victory because I think, hey, my friends are happy, but it's not the same. And so, but once yeah. you once you start broadcasting in that city, and you say, hey, we we're, we're going to play three series in Jacksonville, then Jacksonville becomes a brave city. And, no, and then, I get it, one hundred percent. And so I, 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 I'm actually shocked that I, I, in 2003 when this happened, I thought it was going to happen more. I'm shocked that it hasn't even been broached until 2019. But that's the last thing I really felt compelled to say on that subject. We did talk about some things beforehand. Well, you, you, you were right, man. I didn't realize how bad Cleveland was. They're 23rd in attendance this year. They're right, right in front of Oakland, which I always think is a horrible baseball and city because I've always, been a million A's games and no one draws shit there. And Oakland's also talking about. I mean, they're a circuit team that always thinks about moving. You know. Well, Oakland, Oakland's biggest thing they need to move there, and there, and if anyone knows anything about Oakland, they're in East Oakland, like the flats, like what people consider like the straight up hood. And it, it's real. <laughs> like you can't park there without getting harassed. Like it's just—it's not a fun place, man. Versus, you know, San Francisco is very bougie and just the exact opposite. You got fifty-dollar parking and just everything's real plush over there. I, 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 so I, I get f- it. I, get I, it. I fear um, the idea of of calling any place in Orlando really ghetto because it's freaking Orlando. But the parts, <laughs> the parts of the town that are the worst parts of town is literally where they built the two new stadiums where the. Where the Magic play and where I don't know if you follow soccer, where Orlando City plays, and it seems like just that area around it seems fine. You know what I mean? It just got better. 
overnight. Like you, you would think that the, the, that the stadium itself, with all those people coming in and the cops and the people that are around it, that it would just be that would be okay. You know, I. I so you're saying it, that it became. A-